Hello and welcome to my home projects and organizational video. We recently moved into this house if you're new here and we're slowly working on getting it decorated. We did bring over a lot of our furniture from the last house and some of it's working, some of it's not, so we've had to replace it and I'm tweaking any of the pieces that I can, so you're gonna see some of that in today's video as well. But if you wanna get caught up, I have all the videos created that you can go back and check out as well as you can follow me over on Instagram I'll have that link down below in my description box so definitely make sure you're following me over there and make sure to hit that red subscribe button if you enjoyed today's video and I did want to mention to everybody that's already done that make sure you've clicked all notifications turned on I noticed only about 25% of you have that clicked and YouTube will not send you out all of my new videos they'll just do it occasionally so if you don't want to miss any of my content that I post here, definitely make sure you have that clicked with all the notifications checked. But let's go ahead and get started on the first project. As you can see, it's my dining room table. This is fairly new from the last house and it looked really good in there, but the coloring was off in this house. It just seemed a little dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up so we can get it painted today. For this project, I'm not gonna need a lot. I have an old sheet so I can put it underneath my table so I don't mess up my rug. And then we are just gonna use the paint that the builder left over. I want it to match my cabinets. So this is what they used. It does say exterior, so you know, if you're painting, you don't necessarily have to buy that, but we just have leftover. But we chose the color alabaster because that's what we have on our cabinets and trim and inside our house, as well as the outside of the house, obviously, since we have that paint. But we might as well just use that to save money than go buy a brand new can of paint and it'll just last longer on that piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to move this. You can see I struggle. This table doesn't look heavy, but it is so heavy and sturdy. Um, so I kept trying to get the sheet under it. You'll see me struggle, but I went ahead and left it in. I thought it would be fun to watch. <laughs> Just in case you're curious, I'll link this table down below in my description box if it's still available, but we got it from Wayfair and I really do like it. And like I said, it is very sturdy. I felt like the style though was going a little like French country in this house instead of like modern fancy farmhouse is kind of my vibe in here. So I feel like it needed to be more of a solid white than it would have like a, almost like a dark wash on it or a glaze. And so I wanted to get rid of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this whole like bucket of paint and stir it really well because it's been setting for, for probably a couple months and just make sure it's nice and mixed before I get to painting. Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground I will keep on searching for my 
I feel like the hardest part with painting is just getting started. It's kind of like a workout. Once you do it and get going, you're happy you did it. Um, you feel better. It looks better. It's kind of one of those things. It's just getting the motivation to start. And I've learned if I can keep the supplies on hand, I'm more likely to do it. So if you have like old towels or sheets, save those. Definitely buy up some brushes. And for me, I like to keep paint on hand. I typically use the same paint throughout my house, like the same whites, the same grays, but you could just buy a few and buy samples. Typically, you don't need a ton to paint a piece of furniture. It takes a lot less paint than you realize. So just buy that and some tape. And then when you get that urge to paint, you have it and you can just do it then. It's kind of like us women with haircuts. If we do it immediately, we'll do something crazy. Um, but if you wait a while, you talk yourself out of it. So this is just a fun way. If you keep it on hand, you're probably more likely to get some of those tasks done or home projects knocked off your list. And I typically never regret it. Like I feel like a piece looks so much better once it's been repainted. So you can just see, I'm going to put a really thin layer of coat on the first time and then here in this next slide I'm going to show you the difference so you can kind of see the color of what it was and what it's going to be. And as the light startled our eyes we let go of disguise and now there's something in the air and a sparkly shimmer on our If you're new to painting, I do have other videos where I go more in depth on how to paint something and I show it step by step, plus they're all over YouTube. But just to give you some quick tips here, if this would have been like wood, I would have sanded it or did a liquid sander before I painted it. And if this would have been like a darker color, say it was already painted, but it was like a black or a navy or a darker color, I would have primed it first. Um, and that just makes sure you have less layers and that color doesn't show through. But since this was already a lighter color and it was already painted, I could just go straight into painting. So this was a super, super easy project to go ahead and get started and just knocked out. I feel like painting is just a really affordable and easy way to make your house feel new and fresh. So whether you're painting a wall or a piece of furniture, um, it can just really improve and kind of modernize any of the pieces you have. I'm going to show this piece right here. I painted and added hardware to this and I made an old piece feel new. So if you're on a tight budget with decorating, trust me, I've totally been there. Definitely just start with some paint, start with cleaning and decluttering but then go to paint and just doing those three things can make you have a new home on a super, super tight budget. So right now I'm just adding the second layer of paint. In my experience, anytime you're painting something white, it takes me three coats. Now it typically just takes Chase two. He puts it on a lot thicker, but to me, I like to just do three like thin coats. I can get it done really quickly. I feel like it dries really quickly and there's no like smudges or anything. So this ended up taking a total of three and I'm gonna show you an up close here in a second just so you can see what the two layers looks like and why I go ahead and add that third one. So 
So from far away, it looks fine, but when I take the camera up close, you can see there's still like brush strokes in it. It's not completely solid yet. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and just real quickly put this third layer on. So it's just like a solid white piece of furniture. back to this project here in a little while to finish it up but I wanted it to dry before we moved any of the cloth or anything so now we're gonna head over into our master bathroom Chase had ordered me a chandelier to put above the bathtub and so we needed to um, put it together and then install it but I wanted to show you a before clip all we have is like a flat can light up there plus I didn't like the color of the bulb and it's like a LED light so we couldn't fix it so this is gonna fix both of those solutions so we're going to go ahead and take this down and then start assembling the chandelier. So just a quick reminder, anytime we're dealing with electricity, we always go and turn the breaker off. I didn't show that in today's video and I normally do, but if you're going to do a project like this, definitely take the time and turn that breaker off. I know this looks like a lot of pieces. Anytime you're like putting together a chandelier, it always seems daunting and stressful, but this is a smaller chandelier and it took under 10 minutes, so it wasn't bad at all. Um, our last experience was doing the huge one that we have up in our living room that came with like a DVD player. So this one was nothing compared to that and it is really pretty. You can see the little crystal right here, um, but I just wanted to let you know if you do want one, I'm gonna put it in my Amazon store and it was easy to assemble. While Chase is assembling this, I wanted to remind you if you haven't checked out my 13 cleaning hacks, it's definitely a good video. I'm going to leave a link down below and once you finish watching today's video, you can check it out. But I always love sharing some fun hacks with you guys that you may not already know. Okay, so here is what it looks like now that it's all assembled. And like I said, it was just about 10 minutes to do. It's so sparkly and shiny. I think it's gonna look gorgeous above the bathtub. So now we're gonna head back in there. If it's a little dark, it's because we have the breaker off. So that's why we assembled it in the living room. So if the lighting looks a little different, I'm like pointing it at a window and we have no lights to turn on. But it just took a little bit to install. Chase has gotten really good at just hanging lights. So this was a super easy process project and I'm happy with the way it turned out.
I wanted to show you these cord covers because I love using them throughout my house. They're great for like chandeliers and lighting. They're also great if you have lamps or anything that plugs in that you kind of see down low behind furniture or if it comes out from behind the furniture and you don't want to look at cords. So you can find them at Hobby Lobby, but if you get on Amazon, I'll link a few for you. They have way more color choices and fabric choices, but if you just want to go to a store, Hobby Lobby does carry them and you can use your like 40% off, but they just don't have as many options. But I feel like it's just a really cheap way to hide cords because cords drive me crazy. Gonna head back into the dining room. This is dry enough that we can take the cloth out from underneath it. I wouldn't want to like touch the white paint right now because it's probably still a little tacky, but it's enough that Chase can like lift up on it and I can pull it out. Um, it was much more graceful this time since there was two people. You guys saw what it took to get it underneath. But if we just did it like that, then there won't get any paint on my rug. Anytime I show this rug though, I get a lot of questions about it. It's from Boutique Rugs, and if you use Ash 60, you'll get 60% off your order. So you can definitely check it out. You always ask the size. I think it's around seven foot, but it's the only round size rug that they sell. I know it's not like an extreme difference, but I feel like it looks so much better. I can't believe how much brighter it is over in that space now. It doesn't just get lost. So I'm super happy with the way it turned out. Now I've got to figure out what kind of chairs I want, if I want to keep these or do something different. I've been on the hunt for like a few weeks and I'm having the hardest time finding chairs that are in stock and don't cost like a whole arm and a leg. So I've been on the hunt for that. But now we're gonna move on to something for organizing. I had a really sweet friend send this to me and I've been saving it so I could film it on camera for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this opened up and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use it. Okay, so this is how I've been storing our belts. It works if you don't have anything else, but if you need like a belt in the middle or the bottom, you have to take everything off of it. So now that I have this really cool belt organizer, it can be on separate hooks. So whichever one we need, we can just pull off. So that's gonna be so much more helpful. Plus you could use this for like scarves or handbags. You could even do this with like leggings or yoga pants. So I think this is a pretty cool tool. Um, I'll link it down below in my Amazon store, but I'm sure it's from like home goods or something like that and they're super affordable. So definitely look into this if you need some organizing in your closet and you don't have like a lot of wall space. Anything I can do hanging is super helpful because we have a lot of hanging space in our closet.
is what it looks like. It's super easy and basic, but it's funny how stuff like that is so helpful. You can see how we hang Chase's hat is another way of like hanging storage. I'll leave those linked down below as well. So if you're interested in either one of those products, but now we're going to head out into my garage. So in this house, since my laundry room's connected to my garage, I can actually keep my like brooms and ironing board out there. In a recent video, I showed you how we hang like mops and brooms and items like that because I don't like them sitting on the ground. And a few of you guys suggested um, this little contraption for my iron and ironing board. So we're going to go ahead and get this hung. It was so easy to do and I love items not being on my garage floor. Just like that, my garage floor is clean. Everything's hung up. I don't have to worry about bugs or anything getting into it. So I love all those systems and I'll have those in my Amazon store as well. But thank you so, so much for just watching today's video and hanging out with me. Don't forget if you're new here, I would love for you to hit that red subscribe button and then click all notifications. But I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Why?